Hey, everybody. Andrea Swenson here, host of The Local Show. And I am so excited to be connecting for his first virtual interview, I think, ever, maybe, via computer. Bob Mould is joining me from San Francisco. Bob, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Hope everything is, hope everything is safe and good there. It's been a very intense week and a half. Um, I can go more into detail about what's been happening here in the Twin Cities, but I'm curious to know, you know, as um, someone that is so rooted in this city, but is witnessing it from afar, you know, how has this week and a half been for you? How are you receiving all, all of these events? Uh, the senseless injustice, the, the murder of George Floyd is hard to watch watching it from afar is it's 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 sort of crazy because you know not you know to personalize it a little bit you know i used to live two blocks from the third precinct and when i see all of the streets that i you know sort of spent 11 years of my life on and, and you know i mean it's 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 really amazing to see people out and, you know, in, in, in the midst of a pandemic and all of this unrest to see people getting out and, and speaking their minds with peaceful protests. That's really, really, that's what we need to be doing. But yeah, the whole thing is, is, it's pretty surreal. You know, it's, um, you know, and also watching, you know, Washington DC where I lived for seven years and watching New York city where I lived for a number of years and just watching everything everywhere around the country. These are places, you know, these neighborhoods and these places, the, you know, people are, are, are congregating to make themselves known. I mean, it, these are all the neighborhoods where artists and musicians and the clubs nightclubs are. And it's, you know, it's just, it's, 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 I, this is this is all new to me. So I'm just yeah, you know, and this being my first interview about a, a, anything I've been up to lately. Excuse me if I seem a little askew. You know, I've been sort of hunkered down for months. So, well, I really appreciate you taking the time to connect. So the um, reason that we're connecting is because you have a new album coming out, and we just debuted a couple new songs on The Current this morning um, that feel extremely timely in this moment, including the song American Crisis. And I was really um, curious about, you know, you write in um, some of the words that you sent over about this, this work that you're seeing a lot of parallels between what's happened in the past and what's happening right now. Can you tell me a little bit more about what you mean about that? Yeah, um, well, there's a uh, there's a new album, and the the song that we're talking about is called American Crisis, and the 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 genesis of the song is a little over two years ago. I was writing material for a previous album called Sunshine Rock, and it was a, supposed to be you know sort of a happy record. And uh, American Crisis was supposed to be the second to last song on that album, right before Western Sunset. Um, I thought it was a little heavy at the time. I thought I didn't think it fit with the sort of sort of the uplifting motif of being in Berlin and all, you know everything that, that that record was. So, you know, I tabled those words and music. And when uh, John Worcester and Jason Narducci and my engineer Bo Sorensen, the four of us got together in early February in Chicago to make what is about to, you know what is this album coming up and. Uh, this song, American Crisis, like I said, it's been around for a while. It uh, it really inspired the way that I've been looking at things the past nine months. Uh, I, I think it was probably it was probably in late summer of last year when I was in Berlin. I just started playing a lot of guitar and thinking about that song and thinking about things that the that we three in the band had talked about wouldn't it be great to make a, like a real raw sort of punk rock record because you know that's really what we that's my at the end of the day that's how i tell stories and uh you know so i had american crisis and i started writing around that song um but in doing so in september of last year i started reflecting back and the way things were in late 1983, who was I then, you know, as this 22 year old kid in Minnesota and, you know, I was in this punk rock band called Husker Du and we traveled around the country spreading our message to people. And 
and things were, you know, th th things back then were tough. You know, I was, I was closeted, gay young man. Uh, I was sort of living in this new world for a couple of years with this gay cancer called grid and then called AIDS and, you know, sort of having a hard time figuring out my sexuality and how I, if there was a community for me to fit into and if I felt comfortable in that community alongside a lot of, you know, televangelists and people on the right, you know, sort of the, the, the Reagan backers at the time, you know, telling me I'm less than telling me this is God's punishment for who I am and how I live. And it, you know, it, it all of all of that kind of 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 you know being you know, feeling marginalized you know feeling less than you know I, I was feeling that coming back you know during you know this this current administration you know it, it seems as if you know the the you know it, it seems as if this person was chosen to be the spokesperson for a pretty you know far branch of evangelism and, uh, you know, that's what got this, that's what got the ball rolling was all of those things. I don't know if any of that makes sense, but that's, that's sort of where all the, where all the streams led. And then I sort of had this, you know, pond that became uh, an ocean of ideas <laughs> and, you know, the American crisis, it's, it's crazy because those words fell out two years ago and they just fell out on the page. And I looked at them and I'm like, uh, I'm not touching these. <laughs> these are the words just the way they are. And none of, you know, and, and to jump up to today as we're talking and things are happening in real time, it's, it's, it's not something, not something I, I wanted to see. Uh, I certainly don't take any uh, joy in having foreseen the country going in this direction. I wish this was not happening, but here we are. Yeah. Well, it must be very, um, I don't even know the right word to describe it, but it, it must be quite the experience then to, you know, have written these songs and then to see the events that have unfolded here in, in your hometown. Um, and to have the song debut on the radio this morning. I mean, what is it like for you to put this out in the world in this moment? Uh, I've been really nervous for weeks. I, and especially in the last, you know, in the last week, it's, you know, everything has taken a turn that none of us, you know, none of us could have seen. And now that we've seen it, we should have, you know, we have to do something about it. Um, again, just, it, 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 it's just, it's mind boggling. You know, I watch the coverage and I watch, you know, the leaders, you know, I watch, you know, Mayor Carter, Mayor Fry, Tim Walls, Keith Ellison. And it feels like it's, that feels like the Minnesota that I know, not the Minnesota that needs somebody telling them that they need the military. That is not the Minnesota I know. I know Minnesota well enough to know that it will, everybody will, get this sorted out and there will be justice and then we can start moving forward with the really hard work, you know, undoing centuries of discrimination and racism and injustice for the black community and for, you know, all of us need to be able to express ourselves. And this is a real test for that expression. So something I've been thinking a lot about um, over this past week is just, you know, how this reflects on our um, music scene in Minnesota and the voices that have been amplified and the voices that haven't. I'm wondering, you know, punk rock has <laughs> changed a lot over the years. In some ways it hasn't. What is the role of a, a white punk artist in this moment? Like what, what do you feel like you can contribute to the conversation? Well, as a, as a, as a, as a, as an older white gay male who plays in a punk rock band right now and has played in a punk rock band my whole life, it's, it, it's, it, I, I see it. <laughs> I, I, I see it and, and it's, it's, it's 
it's it's similar to any kind of civil rights struggle, but it's very, very unique because it's very specifically American. You know, we it is baked into our our identity as a country. And, you know, so much work was done in the 60s to try to remedy, you know, the the, the injustice. And it, I guess if I look, you know, if I take a cursory look back, you know, we've, we've you know, it's ebbed and flowed, you know, the progress, Some, you know, I mean, from January 2009 to January 2017, I think we, I think we had some, we had a leader who was very much in tune with, you know, trying to forward civil rights, you know, and Black Lives Matter and all of the things that we need to be learning about if we don't know the details of it. And, you know, I'll be the first to say I am listening and learning constantly right now. Um, the role, uh, my role in this, I don't know. I did not see the, uh, like I said, I did not see any, I did not foresee the specifics of this when I was, when my head was on fire from October of last year until early March when mastering was finished and I signed off on the record. Um, you know, we walked right, you know, we went right into a pandemic after that. And, you know, we, I mean, it's been three months of being cooped up. Uh, my role is to be, you know, to share what my heart tells me and to share the water that I catch when it rains. And it's, you know, to try to, you know, just try to express myself. I, my specific role, I don't know. I was, I'm not, if, if anybody has ideas for what I can do to help, I'm all ears. I mean, other than, you know, just uh, my, my two minutes of belligerence. Apparently I, I gave birth to a colicky baby or something. <laughs> <today>. <laughs> Well, that song yeah. just came blasting out. I mean, it was really something to behold at nine in the morning. Um, we're going to be playing it for sure again throughout the day on The Current, but um, you can go look this song up right now, Bob Mould with American Crisis. You know, I, I'm curious for you as well as an artist who isn't able to perform live right mm -hmm. now or, or go on tour or use that kind of to spread your messages uh, and your feelings, you know, what what is the plan uh, for you know putting out this record and what is this experience like for you to release music at this in that way um, when everyone is not able to congregate in person? I know. Well, first, it's just weird for me to be even talking about like a, a campaign because it's it's sort of you know it's 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 sort of way on the back burner right now compared to what we all need to do as a as a country. Um, but it is what I do and it is my work and it's how I make my living. So I'm sort of out of work right now and that's, you know, I'll be okay. Things will, things will come back, but it's with a, with a record like this, that's, that's very raw and very sort of visceral and, 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 and really built for the stage. It's driving me crazy that I can't present the message in the format that I was hoping to, you know, having, Having said that, you know, I, I, I did a, I did two and a half weeks of solo electric shows in January of this year, and I was test driving a lot of these songs. And, and you know, I'll, I'll tell you that playing those songs with the meaning, with the original meaning, you know, just being concerned for the country and, you know, trying to reconcile my self-hating as a young gay man and, and what I perceived as my inactions when, when, you know, my crisis in the eighties with HIV AIDS was, 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 was bubbling up. And, you know, I, I always feel like I never did enough and, you know, it's just, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I'll, fi I'll, I'll figure something out, but it's, it, it is, it is, it is odd to, to not have that. But I guess the, the, the understanding and the energy that I was picking up from people when I was performing these songs earlier in the year, you know, I would go out, after the show and, and, and go to, you know, meet people and do, do the, do the thing. And, and, and people were just coming up with incredible stories to me, you know, you know, a lot, you know, just a lot of people, a lot of trans folk and people of color and people who really, you know, were as scared as I am about the way the country is going. And, you know, they, were very encouraging when hearing the early versions of these songs, just saying, you, you do this, you know, this is what you do. So, yeah. yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> well, the new album is called Blue Hearts. I'm wondering if you could talk about that that title a little bit. Um, well, the fir the first song, Heart on My Sleeve, was the whole, you know, just thing. I mean, that's that's me. And the blue part, I mean, it's blue as in Democrat Party. And last time I had blue in the title of an album during an election year, we won. So I'm going to try again. You know, the 92 with Copper Blue, and that was Clinton. And I don't know. I'm like that. I'm, I'm a kooky superstitious like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I did not make that connection. <laughs> yeah, that, that was <laughs> well, Bob, it's just so wonderful to see your face and, and hear your voice. I'm wondering, you know, as people are tuning in on Facebook Live, do you just have anything that you want to say to Minneapolis right now, the city that you're so connected to? Stay safe, stay strong, stay out there and let them know that we're all incredibly upset at what has happened and we cannot have this happening anymore. We cannot, you know, police, we need to overhaul all communities need to take a, a long, hard look at law enforcement. And to me, one of the key things is making sure that the police that we hire live in the communities that they serve and protect. It's really, really important as a gay man, we find safety in our neighborhoods and the police who take care of our neighborhoods here in the Castro and San Francisco, they're in tune with the specific and special needs of the, of the community that they serve and protect. I think there, there's so many things that need to be done, but you know, I mean, you know, with, with, you know, I mean, Keith Ellison is doing everything, you know, you know, Mayor Carter, Mayor Fry, Tim Wallace. I think everybody is is listening and learning as I intend to listen and learn as this goes on. And I will do whatever I can do to help. And as far as I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about the Twin Cities. I I know how people really are in Minnesota. I was there in 79, you know, when the Hmong resettlement started, you know, I, you know, and Somali and, you know, I mean, so many communities have been welcome in Minnesota. And I think sometimes people outside of Minnesota, maybe they're looking at the mainstream media and there's these perceptions and there's not a lot of backstory or infill that shows the Minnesota I knew, you know, the, you know, First Avenue and 7th Street Entry being a nexus for all the music of the early 80s. Who's going to do One Night Prints the next, Replacements the next, The Time the next. I mean, we all play well together. I don't, that's, this, I know, I, I think I know what Minnesota is going to do with this. And I know it will be a full recovery and a full overhaul of law enforcement. And we need to make sure that our voices are heard and, and, you know, thank God there's, you know, young, healthy people that are willing to go out to the streets every day for us. I, it's, it's appreciated. Thank you so much for being here and, and for talking. It's, it's such a heavy time, but I, I really do appreciate you and, and I appreciate you sharing your music with us. Thank you so much. Thank, Bob. You. thank you for the support. Have a great day.